What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an incredible day. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and was able to enjoy lots of good groceries from the backyard grocery store. We had a nice week off, nice little break. We spent the first half of the week up in North Georgia camping at a place called Moccasin Creek State Park not too far from Clayton, Georgia. And I had a really good time up there just relaxing. It was kind of cold, but I uh, had a good time nonetheless. And then we came back here for Thanksgiving to get our bellies nice and full. One thing I noticed when I was up there in North Georgia is that that soil up there is just beautiful. It's just beautiful. We were sitting around the campfire and the kids had my little camp shovel and they were digging around underneath the leaves there. And man, it's just red and it just looks rich and nutrient dense. And I'm just so jealous of that soil up there. It just made me want to find a spot and just try to grow a garden up there because that soil looks so nice, especially compared to our sandy soil here, which doesn't hold nutrients very well. I can just imagine how good a garden you could grow up there without having to provide a lot of nutrients or a lot of extra nutrients to the food you're growing. Now, obviously that soil probably isn't as workable as our soil is, but nonetheless, I'm still pretty jealous of that soil. And while we were gone, we ended up having our first frost. When we got back, I could tell a lot of the grass was dead. There wasn't a lot of damage in the garden. I had watered everything pretty good before we left. We had a few things, some red cabbage that took a little bit of a hit, but most everything is okay. We're supposed to get another frost in the morning. I think a little harder than the frost that we got while we were gone. So I need to take care of this plot behind me here. And we got to get these fall potatoes out of here if there are any fall potatoes in here so want to get those before we get a frost i don't think that little frost we had last week or earlier this week affected them we'll just have to see but either way we need to get what we can get out of here before we get a really hard freeze now you really can't tell now but there are some tater plants and tater rows amongst that cool season cover crop jungle there so just to recap how we got to this point we planted back in late summer this glass gem corn on this end right here we had some popcorn over here this side of it that was done and we had some potatoes in the barn that still looked pretty good from spring so we said why don't we give them a try why don't we plant some we planted some they didn't come up that great and we said, well, we need to have a plan B. So we put this cover crop in here and let them all just kind of grow together. And the intercropping of the cool season cover crop with the fall potatoes worked really, really well up until about two weeks ago when it started getting really, really cool. And the cover crop started kind of outpacing the growth of the potatoes. And then we couldn't see the potato plants anymore. I don't know if it smothered them out completely, I think. We've still got some plants in there somewhere. We'll just have to find them. Now, in addition to the impending frost tonight, another reason we want to go ahead and terminate this cover crop, scratch out what potatoes we can find in there is because this mustard here in this cover crop is flowering and going to seed as you can see there. And that's one of the things about planting cover crop mixtures or mixing your own cover crop cocktails. You're dealing with different varieties, different crops that have different maturity dates. So some may go to seed before others. If this mustard wasn't in here, this stuff may grow all throughout the winter and look great and just keep plugging along. But for some reason that mustard is bolting and going to seed. I don't really know why it is. I wouldn't think it would this early, but it is. And so, you know, we're gonna terminate it. We've got a pretty good stand here, some nice green manures, a lot of biomass. So not all is lost. The cover crop pretty much did its job. I don't know what we'll do after we get rid of this cover crop here. I would have liked for it to stay longer but it didn't, the mustard went to seed. So we gotta do what we gotta do. Now what's really, really interesting, and I have no explanation for this, is that the areas where the mustard is bolting is exactly where the potato rows are. I don't know if y'all can see this much detail on the camera, but this row right here, right in the middle of the frame, 
is where the first potato row is and you can see a ton of mustard flowers there if you go between the first row and second row you don't hardly see any mustard flowers you see a lot of these winter pea plants skip over I know exactly where that second row is because all those mustard plants are flowering there same thing with the third row and the fourth row over here where this corn is planted we got a few little mustard flowers in there but not a lot so for some reason you know unknown to me the mustard wants to bolt where those potatoes are planted now my only possible explanation would be that it has something to do with a pre-plant fertilizer that was put down before those fall potatoes were planted. That's my only guess. If you got any good guesses, I would love to know why the mustard is only bolting where the potatoes are. So as it stands right now, it would be pretty hard to dig those potatoes. And since we need to terminate this anyway, I'm gonna go grab the mower. We're gonna mow this down. We can't really scalp it because we've got those potato hills there. But we're going to mow it down a little bit so we can get in there and scratch for those potatoes a little better. All right, so we didn't mow it down too close, but we mowed it down close enough to where we can now see the potato rows and we can see that kind of that bare dirt there so there's a row right there got some decent looking daikon radishes in there so there's one row scoot over here there's another row right there another couple good sized daikons in there and then we've got another row right here i can kind of see some bare soil there and in the fourth row right here and this is a pretty good sign right here that's a decent size looking tater right there so we may actually have something in here probably gonna have to get the digging fork and uh, scratch around good to find them all though so let me go grab my tater diggers from inside and you know what time it'll be Ty Ty do you know what time it is it's time it's tater time what's that those are daikon radishes. So this first row I think is uh, Yukon Gold. Just kind of reach in here and pull up stuff. Just dig about like that. Look Ty Ty, I found some right here. Hey, yeah. Yes. Yes. We're not going to be able to feed an army with these, but hey, that's a decent one there. Well, we can get a walk. We can try find a big one. Yeah, we'll yeah. try to find some big ones. Yeah, way bigger. Way bigger than that one. Way bigger than all of these. Yeah, I think this is right. It didn't come up that great. Here we go, Tata. -ta. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's tater time. Now let's find a bigger one. There's a good one. There's a good one. Okay. Here's a little one. Here's one. Look. That one almost looks like a peach, don't it? Um. Can you kind of split? Yeah. These are like carrots. Yeah, they do look like carrots. They're radishes. Oh, here we go, bud. Big, 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 <laughs> big. big. <laughs> Look, Tata. -ta. He's a toad. He blended in. A toad. Here's some. Oh, bring the bucket, buddy. All right, on to the next row. Yeah. There's one. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, yeah. Look, Tata. -ta. Tater. 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 Tater time. This is kind of funky. That's Tater. kind of a funky one. <laughs> Oh, look at there, Tata. -ta. Put it in the tater pile. Now put it in the tater bucket. Stella, you're not being a very good helper. What is in her mouth? She's just sitting here watching. Stella. That's where all the kids' toys go. She brings them out here. Yeah. 
Here's a tighter plant. Put a knife in there. Oh yeah. Put a knife in there. Right here, Tata. -ta. Careful. All right. Oh, there's a mother load. Here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those are like them high dollar taters at the grocery store. Them little ones like that. These aren't small. They're just supposed to be like this. Yeah, these are gourmet specialty. Oh, there's a few more. Little babies. Baby taters. Oh, there's some good ones right there, Tata. -ta. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Look at all them little taters. Put them in the bucket quick. Put them in there quick. Before they get too cold. What you got in the bucket? Taters. Bunch of little taters. In Think those bucket. are gonna be good to eat? That's my favorite size. Look right here, Tata. -ta. Hey. Look what I found. Are you like on purpose just going straight to the honey hole and like leaving me over here just to play no, in look, there? Look. Wow. Wow, those are good ones, aren't they? These are cold. I want those finger claw gloves. Oh. I don't know if some of them. They have these gloves that got tips on them like claws. Oh goodness, Tata, -ta, look. Oh, claw. Where's find a lot? A lot of good too. Look. Oh, baby. Here, get them too. Where's one? So why do you think these are going to be good? What do you mean? Why did you say you think that's going to have a lot? Because this is an earlier variety. And these were kind of planted with not much time to grow. Oh, wow! So the earlier maturing varieties, like the red ones, tend to be more prolific. Well, because they mature faster, should get bigger yeah. taters faster. Yeah. At least that was my hypothesis. Mm. Hold on, Tata, I forgot. We got to put these red ones in a different bucket. Hold on just a second. Okay, Tata, put the red ones in this bucket. Okay. Yeah, because it matched. Red taters in the red bucket. Look, what, look inside. See, that's a tater plant right there. I can yeah, tell. I see it. Look, 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 <laughs> you can tell because the red taters yeah. stick it up. Look at brown skin, too. Yeah, it got skin there's up. Titus. Look at there, Tata. -ta, there's some good ones. Uh, that's the biggest one yet. I brought this one. How much is this one? It's still. Whoa. That's a little baby. Mom. Oh, Tata, -ta, come down here. Wait, he's still got taters up here he's sitting out. Well, you better come on. You better come on. Bring your bucket. Get your bucket right here so Mom can put it. Oh, those are pretty little red taters right there. Here, Tata. -ta. We're finding a lot of red taters. Yep, yep. Mom, get all those out. I got them. I got them, buddy. Yes, no. It's really happy for me to pick it up. It's too heavy? Use all your strength. Any taters on the end? Real big tater. Oh, there's a tater in the bucket, a big tater. All right, so we didn't knock it out of the park, but we didn't get skunked either. If you've been following along, you know that a lot of the seed potatoes we put in the ground rotted because we got some heavy rains right after planting them so we didn't have a full row ah, to tater. start with taters so i think the one we got the least of would be the yukon golds here you can see not a whole lot in that bucket like maybe a three enough pound bucket yeah maybe enough to <laughs> cut up and use for seed potatoes that was kind of the main goal of this is to grow our own seed potatoes for oh, planting in the spring. I didn't know that. I thought but, uh, I was about to make mashed taters. Yeah, we can certainly make <laughs> some mashed potatoes. So the Yukon Golds, we just got a couple handfuls. The um, Kennebex here. This are good. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of real big ones. But we got a lot more of those. This little uh, black bucket here full we of got, those. Uh, we got a, a lot of small ones. Yeah, a lot of small ones. But definitely enough here to use for a row of seed potatoes and eat some. Yeah. Okay, so wait, so you're planting these seed potatoes in February. So we're storing them until February. How are you storing them? 
I was gonna store them underneath the barn with the tarp on top of them. Okay. And they shouldn't freeze in there okay. like that. All right. You wouldn't want them anywhere where they were gonna freeze. Got it. I bought yellow. Third row, we got. Uh, here's the ones you like, Titus. German butter balls here. I'd like to call these fancy gourmet potatoes. They are fancy. <laughs> they taste really good. These are all tiny. These may be too small to use as seed potatoes. Some of them might be big enough. They're not too small for my baby. But uh, these are like the ones you go to a fancy restaurant and get, and uh, or you go to the grocery store and pay a pretty penny for. <laughs> and these, you roast whole. Yeah. Oh. Or if you want to cut them in half, but why go the extra work? Yeah. We These roast those delicious. babies whole. Those are going to be some fine eating. So probably not enough for seed potatoes on the German butter balls, but we will surely enjoy eating these guys over the next month or so. And then our best row we had would be the red potatoes. Now, I planted half a row of red Viking, half a row of red Pontiac. Not red Pontiac, red Norland. And I'm not sure which is which. I really couldn't tell where yeah, it the didn't middle look of the like there stopped. Was any difference when we were pulling out clumps. But uh, these are beautiful. I mean, are look pretty. at the color on those. Just great, great looking potatoes there. And I think we can use some these for seed potatoes and uh, eat some of the smaller ones as well. So we'll probably pick out the tiny ones, roast those, save these bigger ones like this for our seed potatoes this February. I got some questions. Okay. So these heels did not feel as big as our spring heels. They weren't because I didn't, <laughs> I healed them up. Okay. I healed yeah. them up after those plants uh, came up. Okay. But then I wasn't really optimistic about the potatoes in oh, general, so I planted all the faith in them. So mm -hmm. I planted that cover crop there, and once that started coming up, I you couldn't, couldn't really heal, heal after okay, that. Okay, I understand. So there was a difference in that one. That dirt was cold. <laughs> the dirt was cold. Through. I would advise gloves. It was a little chilly digging in there. This temperature's dropping fast. Fast. It was, it was Seventy warm. degrees earlier today, and. It's got to get down to 33 tonight, so it's dropping oh. quick. We joke. I feel like we talk a lot about the weather on this channel. Yep. But we joke that you go through all four seasons every day here in South Georgia, and you do. I mean, yep. we were wearing short sleeves this morning, then you had a sweatshirt on, and now you see them in a jacket and sweatshirt because it's getting yep. pretty cool. Yeah. You can't put your uh, warm clothes away. No. Yeah. No, layers. That's how we live down here. So it was easier to dig those, I feel. I mean, like I didn't feel a huge difference. We didn't have to dig way down in the dirt like I thought we were going to when I saw the hills were small. Yeah, because the hills weren't mounted up right. real high and there's a lot of root systems going on in that soil yes. there with the cover crop and everything. You yeah. can see all that biology of the soil there made everything nice and soft and we didn't even need the fork. We just no, scratch we didn't, around right. our hands. I thought that cover crop worked really well. Did yeah, you? yeah. The intercropping with that worked really, really well. That's your first year doing this right? with potatoes. Well, uh, yeah, for, I'm first year really doing it with a lot of yeah, things, I but seen uh, you do it before. It, it worked really good with the fall potatoes. <laughs> what you think, buddy? <laughs> so this was the fourth, or, third, or fourth time I've tried growing potatoes in the fall. Oh, and really? This is only the first time I have succeeded, although minimally. Huh? We succeeded. I think you're downplaying the success of this. I think this is great considering you used potatoes that were in the barn they just threw in the ground. Well, yeah, right? true, true. I mean, so, you I mean didn't put we, any money in it. No, we just recycled what we had. Right. So like that worked there. great. Now, I have really bad misfortune, and the reason my fall potatoes typically fail, it's just it could be dry as a bone, and then I get an idea to plant some fall potatoes, and it just floods. Mm -hmm. So what I think I'm going to do next year is I'm going to plant them, and then I'm going to tarp the area for about two weeks and oh. that will keep it from getting any flooding with my bad misfortune you're going to tarp it whether you see rain or not coming r right i'm okay. just going to plant them tarp it for a couple weeks then pull the tarp off and then that way none of them should rot and they should all come up and uh we know now uh, that we can do it i think we should have planted a little earlier i think we planted yeah. these end of september maybe middle of september what makes you think you should have planted them earlier because these smaller ones would have been a little bit bigger. bigger. Uh, Why did you have to get them out of the ground today? Because it's going to freeze in the morning. Uh, and, uh, and weather, yeah. again. Weather. Now, they were covered up pretty good. They might not have froze because uh -huh. they had all that cover crop on them. But uh, you don't know. if they do freeze, they turn to mush. Yeah. And we uh, don't want that to happen. I say that. And, again, like we talk about the weather again, it's wet. 
down here. Like our cold is wet because there's so much humidity. And that, that dirt was moist and we haven't had a rain in I don't yeah. know how long. So I can imagine how much that would have affected it. Yeah, if the ground was to freeze really good, mm -hmm. these would be no good. So we got them out just in time. Okay. Super, super pumped about first time fall yeah, tater mm -hmm. success here. And uh, I know I can do it now, so. <laughs> we'll, uh, Feeling good about yourself. Yeah, yeah. We got under that skin is brown tater. Yeah, and if you scratch away the skin, it's kind of brown. I think that's just daddy's fingernail got it dirty. So we know we can grow potatoes twice a year in the spring, plant in February, and then in the fall plant, you know, late August, early September or so, and just keep recycling our seed stock, assuming we don't have a crop failure, and just boom, boom, boom. Now I probably will buy some, a couple other varieties. We've had some subscribers and people suggest some varieties mm -hmm. we haven't tried before. So I'll probably try a couple new varieties come spring, but we have these as a standby. We have our own sustainable source yeah. of seed potatoes. Yeah, which, which is, is nice. A, yep, that's so awesome. So tell me what you're gonna do with this plot now um because you mowed it down i mowed it down because that mustard was going to seed and even though it's mowed where those mustard plants are they'll just go back to seed real quick so it's not like i can really leave it there okay. i could mow it down more if i wanted to i could till it in i think i'm just put a tarp over it it's got all that green material there it's got a lot of good biology in the soil i think i'm just going to tarp it for the winter and um you know, I that's a good maintenance-free way to do I it. I need to tell a video this. Tell the video something. Potato time is over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Tater time is over. It's you tired? Over. You tired of hearing Daddy talk about taters? <laughs> Okay, so, oh, we're so done, folks. in the next few videos, we'll talk about what we're going to do with that plot. We'll probably end up tarping it. We hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> the last tater time of 2021. <laughs> and uh, we'll have many more tater times to come in 2022. So, uh, always something to look forward to there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life